I've been living in New York City and working in the film and TV business for the past 20 plus years. But I was away visiting family when COVID-19 hit. So now I'm sheltering in place in my hometown of Ames, Iowa, staying in the house where I grew up. Still got the yellow shag carpet. There's still all the treasures and artifacts of my childhood here. Sleeping in my childhood bedroom. And it's funny because it hasn't changed at all since the day I left home decades ago. We thought we heard the angels sing. In the sixth grade, my favorite teacher ever, Mrs. Kelly, read us this book. Then she organized this class project around it that was so incredible, it caught the attention of the national news media. We then thought we heard the angels them. sing. An account of how early in World War II, eight American servicemen ditched a plane in the South Pacific and all but one survived for three weeks on rafts until finally spotted and rescued. Mrs. Kelly got us to write to the survivors and invite them to a reunion in Iowa. I think they're very brave men. And that was me before my voice changed. Isn't this fun? Mrs. Kelly was the kind of teacher that went way above and beyond. You cannot do this kind of thing without having a lot of teamwork. And touched countless lives. I was reminded of Mrs. Kelly when I heard about what this teacher is doing with his students. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. It's really, <laughs> you've, re you've really done something here. It's really cool. My name is Jacob Ezo. In my normal life, I am a middle school choir teacher at South Orange Middle School in Maplewood, New Jersey. People say that, you know, they're called to do something. I know by far I'm called to definitely teach. Me teaching them the music is secondary. More so, I think, to, to feel comfortable with themselves. I let my guard down and then you pulled the rug. I was getting kind of used to being someone you love. In my head, I like to envision it more of like a rock concert for the kids because that's what it is. You know, I think everyone should have everyone should have a rock star experience at one point in their life. And if I can be the one that helps you do it, we're going to do it. Now to New Jersey and breaking news in the Garden State. All schools in the state will be closed beginning on Wednesday. When the school closed, it was kind of a shock. This, as the number of cases grows, it very quickly hit home. Just complete uncertainty. Are you hungry? We went home. Right. To be in quarantine. <laughs> the thing that scared me, seeing the news that there's a real shortage for our responders. The face shield is pretty much the only thing keeping doctors, nurses safe from people that are coughing, people that are sneezing. If they get sick and go down, our entire effort to, to stop this halts. When I bought my 3D printer, I bought it like <laughs> full transparency. I saw someone print it off like a really cool like Baby Yoda and I was like, oh, you can do that? So I got it for that purpose. And then I found like little plans for printing the face shields. Then I was able to make those first 15. I realized, you know, I could do it. And then I could reach out to some people that I know that are healthcare workers and see what they think. The doctor was like, yeah, we could use these. And that's when I knew this is gonna be how I spend my quarantine. So these are the two 3D printers that I have, Thelma on the left and Hope on the right. And this is going pretty much at all times at this point. It quickly turned into realizing that the need was much, much greater in scope than I had initially thought. One of my sixth grade students, he was like, hey, I have a 3D printer. And we just like talk shop about it. And me being completely like confused and being like, uh-huh. So this is, this is my first printer. My name is Jesse Bush. I am 12 years old. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the file from like an online website. I'm trying to print two at once. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to rotate it 180 degrees. Once I'm ready to print it, I'll get the file, I'll slice it, 
and then I'll send it over to one of the printers by Wi-Fi. Press this, scroll down, and print. It's printing the actual face shield, printing two of them. I'm trying to get this to work better, but it's, it pulls all the filament to the printers. When it's done, I'll try to get it off. Just bring it over here with all the other ones waiting to bring it to my teacher, Mr. Ezzo's house. When Mr. Ezzo first reached out to us, this was a tiny operation. I think there was Mr. Ezzo, us, maybe a couple of people assembling them. My name is Julia. My name is Emma. They print the masks and we assemble them. We are provided with what Mr. Ezzo calls a kit. And we basically create an assembly line in our house to put these together. Well, we, we do it. We like play music. We have like a lot of fun doing it. We like try and like brace to like do it the fastest. They put everything together and once it's all done, it comes back to me. I check it all off, make inspect them all. Then we get a crew out to come pick it up and deliver and then it's gone. Doctors post pictures, nurses, pictures with you know thumbs up, wearing them saying thank you. We can really see that they're like using what we're doing. For kids to be in quarantine, any child is, I think, suffering through this. So to be able even just to see from afar that there's other kids that are helping do the same thing that you're doing, and it's something that's literally helping save lives, I think that kind of gives them a sort of boost, a purpose. It feels really good when they're saying thank you to us, and it's just really good to be a part of something and actually know that it's helping people. And then once we started to get feedback that we're like, yeah, these are these are great, we were like, oh, we, we, we've stumbled on a thing. And then it just started to snowball like bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The project is called SOMA, the South Orange Maplewood 3D Printers Alliance. Our organization is 100% grassroots and a statewide effort to produce face shields for the tri-state region, New York City, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. The number of people printing has exponentially grown. Without a doubt, the number of people who have jumped on to help assemble has exponentially grown. Mr. Ezzo has really created an army of middle schoolers and community members that have delivered thousands of face shields. I've made over 200 face shields. I think it's taught Jesse just how you can really make a difference just by doing something you love. I'm super proud because if I could help them, they're the ones that are like risking their lives to save people's lives. They're really the heroes. And so far, Jake and his team have produced and delivered, are you ready for this? 18,630 and counting face shields to hospitals across New Jersey and even some cases into New York. So when this is over, do you think you'll go into manufacturing automobiles at like Tesla working for Elon <laughs> Musk or? <laughs> this has provided an opportunity to sort of write and perform a different type of song. So in some respects, this is my favorite and my best concert that we've ever put on because it's something that's truthfully changing lives. But for me, the absolute dream is to be put out of business. I look forward to the day where I can just kind of go back to my classroom, back to my kids, and go back to making music with them. What I would say to Mr. Ezzo is, I would like the biggest thank you. I have such respect for him, just how much he's helped. Thank you, Mr. Ezzo. Mr. Ezzo, I'd like you to be my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Kelly. Oh, Mr. Ezzo, thank you for doing what you do. And your students will remember this all their lives and they will think of Mr. Ezzo and how he taught them to care about other people. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Ezzo.